sir. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Can we stand to our feet, amen? Let's give God praise in this place. Hallelujah, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Can you do me one favor just before we get into service? Can you go to someone you did not come with and just love what I'm saying? It's good to see you in the house one more time. Come on, just hug on someone. I probably, the Bible declares how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. That God is up to something on tonight, amen. You did not come here by happenstance, not by just regular, you know, I just had nothing else to do. But God has something specific inside for you tonight. And I feel that we'll get it all together on the same page, on one accord, amen. Amen. Come on, love on that person. Tell them it's good to see you in the house one more time. It's good to see you in the house one more time. It's good to see you. Look at all of you with your smiling faces, being healed, empowered, and restored, amen. Hallelujah! 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 You're worthy! You're worthy! You're worthy! You're worthy! Nobody just set it up. Don't worry. You're worthy! 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 You're Let the 
Your goal is to get your soul saved, filled, delivered, healed, empowered, restored. We come, we come with one goal and with one mission. And that is to lift up the name of Jesus. And that is the heart cleansing soul that the Lord remember that he is the lifter of your head. Whatever you need on tonight, I welcome you to tap in. I welcome you to tap. I dare you. For changes, we're praying for transformation. Because yeah. when you change, your mind can change that. But we pray now in the name of Jesus that the Lord gets a hold of you and you become transformed. That is what we want. Becoming her. Healed, empowered, restored. And I welcome you on this evening to do just that. Be healed, be empowered, and be restored. God bless you. Amen. It's in the capable hands of my, my pastor, my husband. Don't you like me? Don't y'all holler too loud, y'all. Y'all can holler for me loud. That's my hand, my hand, my hand. All right, I'll pass. Thank you. Come on, let's give God praise to Cole Pastor. Amen. We're not going to have a time for praise and worship. I want you to give God praise for one of South Florida's very own. She's a dynamic praise and worship leader, and I'm so glad that she's with us for our first conference. Let's give God praise for Sister Maisha Hawkins. Come on. Come on. Let's praise God together. Hallelujah. Come on.
Oh God. Right here we say something sweet to the Lord. We say something sweet to the Lord.
Jesus. I give you my heartache for your joy. I give you my sorrow for your joy. I give you my pain for your healing. We make an exchange tonight. As you feel this room, I give you my depression. I give you my anxiety. I'm talking about something. I give you my heartache. I give you my worries. I talk for you. I'll say it out loud. You don't have to say it. I'll say it out loud. I give you molestation. I give you the rape. I give you the mistreatment. I give you the depression. I give it all to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Jesus.
show a seed of $100 if you can tonight, please. Nine people. I'm the tenth. You can show $100. Amen. It will be greatly appreciated. Amen. The ways to give are up on the screen. Amen. Uh, Becoming Her 2024. The Zale, if you want to give by Zale. And then if you want to give by Give the Five Liberty Faith Church. Or if you have cash right now, you can give right now. Amen. You can come and give now. If you have cash, you can come and give now. Amen. Amen. For those of you that are giving, again, your ways to give are Becoming Her 2024. That's the uh, cash app. All right. Gazelle, and then Liberty Faith Church, give a fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give you all. Amen. Let's all stand. If you're giving electronically, why don't you just come and bring your phone and just touch the altar. Perfectly fine. If you're giving electronically, just come on in. Somebody make some noise for them. Our sister Nikki Jazzy Sweets is in the house. Come on, let's give God for Nikki. Amen. Over humble. Come on, let's give God praise for them. Amen. Her secret place. Come on, let's give God praise for her secret place. Inspired to see an Angela St. Ministries. Come on, let's give God praise for them. And then we have the Spicy Factory. All right, Spicy Factory. Amen. I'm getting to it. Yep, I got you. Love you, Cole. And not only do we have these vendors, but also the, the speaker of the hour has her things in, on sale in the back as well. She has some awesome um, um, uh, merchandise. Thank you. I couldn't think about it. Awesome merchandise and an awesome book I saw on the, on the on the table as well. Please make sure you patronize everybody. Somebody say patronize, patronize. everybody. everybody. Amen. Because um, all that stuff looked great, and I really can't do nothing with all the others. Maybe the sweets, so I might eat a little. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, but I can't, I can't put no earrings on it. Amen. I, sure, I can't do that. So for, all, for, the, for the Empower Her team, y'all listen to Pastor. Make sure y'all get some men's bracelets and next go round. Amen. Amen. Yeah, because I see some men here. And uh, 
There's some men that love God too that don't mind coming to the services. Amen. All right. Cole will get me later. All right. Um, we're going to have a shamanic solo. Uh, I want to, again, I'm, I'm grateful to God for to have a relationship, to, to know these young ladies that have been coming to uh, give us um, selections by way of song. And I thank God for Sister Maisha. Didn't she do an awesome job? Thank you, God. Yeah. Sister Maisha, all of you, amen. Guys, we've been praising worship for a long time. Amen. She now is at uh, ECC, correct? Experience Christian Church. Amen. Bishop, Bishop Darren Pray. Amen. We honor him. Uh, and and uh, I also want to honor the pastor of this house. Amen. Pastor Madoche Bella Reese. Come on. All the heart family. Where you at heart? Woo! We honor Pastor Madoche. We honor Lady Bella Reese as well and all the staff. And thank you, Brother Tim. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. Get this out the way now. Band, we love you. Amen. Um, we're going to have a shamanic solo, and then the next voice you will hear will be that of the speaker of the hour. Um, very quickly, I just want to tell y'all, she got a word. Uh, I, it took me 10 minutes of being around the woman of God. And that prophetic started to kick up. I said, oh, yeah, she's going to tell all y'all off. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, but she does. She did come with the word, and we were blessed to have um, just a quick, quick moment with the woman of God. And, and um, she is just an awesome preacher. Um, she's she's been at the Faith Center with Bishop Fernandez. I mean, um, just to name a couple places. She's from Houston, Texas, and she made her way all the way to West Palm Beach, Florida, to be with us, Liberty Faith Church, and to all of you that are here first for coming to her conference and we just honor the woman of God. We thank God for you and we appreciate you. We pray to God but just use your language for it. Preach how you feel. If you want to prophesy till midnight, all right. Carry on. Amen. Let me give God praise for our sister. She's coming now. Psalmist Tanisha Hunt is coming at the side. Come on, let's give God praise for her. Word of faith in the house. Come on. Amen. Can we stand to our feet for a moment, please? Hallelujah. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, act like you're excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Come on, has he done anything for you lately? Hallelujah. He has kept us in our right mind. He has gave us activity of our limbs. We bless the name of Jesus. Come on, give me a moment. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on and open up your mouth and lift up the name of Jesus. Because he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be lifted up. We exalt his name tonight. We lift your name up on high, Jesus. Because there's nobody like the God we serve. You sit high and you look low.
specifically for you but I also believe that tonight that your neighbor's gonna get a blessing too 
Y'all must have liked your name, bro. Come on, you gotta find the right girlfriend. You gotta find the right boyfriend. If you ain't sent by some sister that wanna celebrate you, you might wanna move. But tonight I need you to look up in the eye and say, Jesus, I'm gonna do something for you tonight. Come on, I need you to begin to open up your mouth real life for your name. Judah has to go first. 
and I'm grateful that they opened up tonight. Can y'all one more time help me celebrate this? Oh. And then to your pastor and your leaders, can you all help me celebrate? like but I want to introduce myself to you guys so South Florida hello so glad to be in South Florida I told myself hey Florida like me a little bit they've been bringing me to Florida a lot lately I'll be back here next Sunday preaching at the Faith Center on Sunday morning and I'm excited to be back in South Florida but I'm just grateful to be here with you all tonight can y'all make some noise for yourself well I have a word tonight I'm not going to hold you long can y'all give it up for the musicians that are off I like musicians and I'm nice to them. You be nice to the musicians, they'll stay up, stay up there and play with you. That's not the only reason why I'm nice to them, I promise. I actually do like them. But I do realize the power that the musician carries. Every demon I can get, y'all throw them, y'all uh, y'all push them out for me. So every spirit that I can't see or sense, you drive it out with your sound. So I'm grateful because we all work together. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's preach the word. I need you to turn to 1 Samuel chapter number 1. 1 Samuel chapter number 1. All right, are y'all a talk back church? Okay, I need y'all to talk back. If not, I'm going to come down there. So I'm probably going to do that anyway. I never stay in the pulpit. I don't know what is happening. Can y'all help me celebrate Miss Bree? She's here with me serving tonight. I'm so grateful for Miss Brianna. Don't take it lightly when people stop their schedules and their lives to come check on you. And I'm grateful for your life tonight. I pray the Lord speaks to you even through your serving. May the Lord continuously open up doors for you as well. Amen. I think I want to read this from the message translation, but y'all can read it from your NKJV or King James with the this is in the vows. I don't have it, that is. This is Pymouth. But we're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter number 1. Let's see where I want to start. Verse number 9. Well, no, let's go up to 8. Can't tell in the message which one is 8 because it's 8 through 7, but we'll start here. This went, uh, this went on a year after year. Every time she went to the sanctuary of God that she could expect to be taunted. Hannah was reduced to tears and had no appetite. Verse number eight. And her hus husband Elkanah said, oh Hannah, why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? And why are you so upset? And I'm not, a, he said, am I not more to you worth more than 10 sons? Verse number nine, so Hannah ate. Then she pulled herself together, slipped away and quietly into the sanctuary. The priest Eli was on duty at the entrance to God's temple in the customary seat. Crushed in soul, Hannah prayed. Crushed in soul, Hannah prayed to God and cried and cried inconsolably. Then she made a vow. O oh God of the angel armies, if you'll take a good hard look at my pain, if you'll quit neglecting me and go into action for me by giving me a son, I'll give him completely unreservedly back to you. I'll set him apart for a life of holy discipline. Verse number 12. It is so happened that as she continued in prayer before God, Eli was watching her closely. Hannah was praying in her heart silently. Her lips moved, but no sound was heard. Eli jumped to the conclusion that she was drunk. He approached her and said to her, you're drunk. How long do you plan to keep this up? He said, sober up, woman. Verse number 15, Hannah said, oh, no, sir, please. I'm a woman brokenhearted. I have been drinking. I have not been drinking, not a drop of wine or beer. 
The only thing I've been pouring out is my heart, pouring it out to God. Don't for a minute think I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy and in such pain that I've stayed here so long. And then he got said to her, go in peace and I may the God of Israel give to you what you have asked of him. Father, we thank you now for your word, God. I pray tonight, God, that you turn this place, God, into a prayer room. Father, I thank you that this is a place of miracles, signs, and wonders. Father, we decrease Lord, so that your spirit may increase on the inside of us. God, use us tonight for your glory. May we have prophetic insight, keen sight. God, that we would see those things and hear those things that you declare over us in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, but find you a girlfriend and tell her it's time to birth it. It's time to birth it. It's time to birth it. I was um, talking to your pastors earlier, and we were discussing the year 23. And we were discussing the greatest year of everybody's life, 2023. <laughs> And I hear y'all laughing because some of y'all can come into agreement that that was like hell on earth for yes. just a moment. 2023 presented us with several different uh, types of pain. It presented us with pain in our finances, pain in our families, uh, pain among us in our relationship. It presented uh, pain even in the church and in the body of Christ. We saw we had several losses and then we also had several gains. And I told them that Psalms 23 was my theme scripture for the year 2023. Yeah. I began to start the year off with an amazing tone and I began to declare that the Lord was my shepherd and I shall not want. And I danced and I screamed and I shouted and I did all types of stuff over. He's my shepherd yeah. and I shall not want. All of this stuff. I did all of that. And then I found myself right there in the... From the place of excitement and pure joy. And then I found myself in the lowest valley. In the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know if I was by myself. But in 23, it almost depleted me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to come down because I don't know how to stand yeah. here. Uh, 23 depleted me. I was at a space, y'all. Can I, can I come down? I don't want to mess up, y'all. Good. All right. So in 23, these things began to happen and pop off and it began to pull me into a place where I went into what I would consider utter depression, into a place where I thought I was going to lose my mind. And at one point in my life, I felt like that the pain was so unbearable that I would start to do things personally to myself. I would preach and have panic attacks. Y'all ain't talking to me. I would show up at church with pain in my eyes and I would dance around the pain that was going on internally. Yeah. I don't know if I'm in here by myself, but you know, because I have been taught how to do church, I knew how to do church, but I found out in last year that I couldn't play no more because I was playing play play, but the devil was playing for keeps. Y'all ain't talking to me. I was playing around and he was coming to really steal, kill, and to destroy. He didn't want nothing, but his desire was to take my breath. I'm trying to find out. Was there anybody in the room that 23 like to took your breath. I need you to understand his desire was not to keep you alive. His desire was to take your breath, not allow you to be able to breathe. But can you be grateful that you moved from 23 into 24? Somebody ought to shout right there. Because if you know anything about Psalms 24, that we move from Psalms 23 from the valley of the shadow of death to now, we ascend to the hill of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> 
He's about to take me up, shake your neighbor, cause they looking at me like I'm crazy. I need you to tell them it's time to get up. Get up out of that low place. Tell them get up out of that street. You've been sitting in that city looking crazy for the last 14 years. If it's not progressive, if it's not advancing, you might want to 
Hannah, check the pulse and check the breath. Here it is, Hannah. It's my girl. Came to preach about Hannah for a second. Hannah, y'all, is in a place of desperation like I was. She was in a place, and I want to stop, pause for two seconds. Let me do this because I saw her after I got to preaching. Um, but I want you guys to help me bless God for my spiritual mother who is sitting all the way in the back. That's I don't understand. Like, uh, Prophetess Diane Lazar, can y'all celebrate her wave your hand beautiful so people can see that she's over there in the corner from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to the, the Light Center. Love her. Love you. Thank you. You make my heart happy. I felt my extra oomph. <laughs> Watch this. So Hannah is in this desperate situation, y'all. She's been praying and looking for a promise. She's been looking for something. And some of us are in the same posture and position that Hannah was in. Looking for God to do something. Asking God year after year, God, are you going to fulfill the promise that you gave me? I know I'm in the right church. There are about 50 of you right now that have got some dormant promises. Some stuff that's been, you know, back in the day, they don't do it too much no more, but it's a thing called layaway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I pay a little bit on it and you get it out, you know what I'm saying? We got some promises that have been on layaway. Yeah. We've seen a little bit of it every now and then, showed it to you in a dream, and then now you're looking up for the manifestation of it. I do want to say this and insert this prayer uh, just for a second here. I do believe that some parts of it has nothing to do with God and everything to do with you. Come on, come on, okay. come on, come on. Now, we all going to talk to the E about that. Yeah. Because we want to blame it on the devil yeah. and we want to blame it on God. On. But some of it is just procrastination. Come on, come on. Some of it is rebellion. Yeah. Some of it is straight witchcraft. Yeah. Because rebellion is as... Some of the things that God told you to do, you won't do it because of fear. He said, I didn't give you that. I didn't give you fear. You took fear. Okay. I gave you faith. I gave you power. I promise I ain't gonna work you all night. I gave you power. I gave you love. I gave you a sound mind, but you took fear. You snatched fear because fear was convenient. Fear was easy, and fear gives you an excuse for you to do nothing. Fear gives you the excuse to say, I ain't doing that. I don't like that. I don't want to be over there. I don't want to do that kind of stuff. So therefore, you don't do it. But when you got faith, you got to get out of a boat. When you got faith, you got to get out on water that you ain't never walked on before. Come on, somebody. When you got enough faith, you got to get out of the boat into a word that you've never walked on before. Wait a minute. This situation feels uncomfortable because everybody I know is still in the boat. All the people that, that I hang out with, all my homies in the boat. So you like being in the boat. Because the boat is comfortable. Y'all may want to talk to me. And God told you it was time to cut, come from among them and be in separate. But you like hanging out with them. And they over there in a comfortable place. You know the boat represents comfort and convenience. It ain't nothing ever been produced in comfort and convenience. And here you
as long as I'm looking at him. I'm watching Jesus. He's going to take me where I need to go. He's going to take me where I need to go. He's going to set me up the way I need to be set up. He's already gone before me. He's already gone into my future. He's walked it. He's just waiting on me now. He's watching me as I work. Come on, somebody. God's waiting on you. So Hannah had a promise. She wanted something. And y'all, she got specific, mama. Mamas. She got specific. She said, I want a son. Yeah. Yeah. She just said, I want a baby. She got specific with her prayer. And she began to say to him, if you would just give me my son. You got to know that your desperation invokes God to get involved. I just want to know how bad do you want it? Do you do, do you want to go another day in the, in the same spot, being in the same place with the same temperature around you? Everything's cold, nothing's moving. Come on, she got to the place, y'all. She said, I, I, "I'm just desperate." She got desperate. She kept looking at her family because he had another wife. Me and God still got to talk about that. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that later, I guess. Once I get up there, be like, now what, what, what was Panana's? Why she was there. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, but Penina was there to agitate her, yeah. provoke her, provoke her to her promise. That's why you keep getting upset and frustrated. That's why you can't stay in that place. That's why you're so mad. Because you keep looking at your bank account and it's in the red. That's a Penina. That's your Penina. That negative bank account is your Penina. Come on. It's your, your, every time you go to a service and you minister and then you don't be paid with your words or y'all ain't want to talk to me or you go to a business business deal and, and it doesn't go off for you. That's your penina. It should provoke you. To yeah, yeah. use the gift. To use the gift that's on the inside of you. Penina's only there to push out the promise. Penina shows you what your future could be. Because she had the children that she wanted. Jesus. So every time she looked to her left and looked to her right, she saw babies. And God had promised her a son. Wow. Your, 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 your provoking. Your, do you understand that sometimes you get upset and get mad at people who are doing what you were called to do? Yeah. Yeah. Let, me, let me give y'all a small story. It's like, picture of Sisame, 19. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was uh, back in, I don't know, maybe 2007. I'm only 20 years old. Um, so back in 20. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm about to be 40. Y'all pray for me. I'm 39. My God. Isn't that old? Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. So back there, back in the day, I can say that now. Back then, I had to come up with a name for a ministry. I had to come up with a name for a ministry, and I was supposed to do it. I had written it out. I was getting ready to get my LLC done with that particular name. And you know, you have to go look it up to see if somebody got it, right? Well, I put it off for another year. Because I wasn't ready in my mind. It was a year from the day that God had told me to do it. So I was just like, okay, give me some time. I'll put it together. Give me a year. You know, I'm going to do my own little thing and I'm going to come up with it, right? So then a year passed and I'm still like, okay, no. So then all of a sudden I get somebody, help me put the stuff together. And they said, let's look it up first in the state of Mississippi to see if their name's already used. Y'all. Went to go look for my name. I was happy, had stuff in order, lined up, everything prepared, logos, brands, everything's ready for this particular logo and everything. Y'all wanna know, a year to the day, somebody had got the, it took my name. A year prior, when God had told me. Wow. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all ain't talking back to me today. Somebody is delayed, and now you upset because you're looking at your stuff. I'm talking to you. I appreciate myself. Give me a mirror. Somebody's on delay, but it was because of your own denial. You didn't believe in you. You didn't believe. You delayed God. God told you to go a long time ago. Here you are, mad because all the scenery, everything messed up, y'all. I want to talk. Things falling apart. You upset because you didn't move when He told you to. So now here I go, gotta do what? Start all over. Just say ouch. ouch. That was for 50 people. Just say ouch. Because somebody got your LLC. It's your fault. 
So I had to start over. And now I'm delayed now, two years now, because now here I go again, give myself another year again. <laughs> we don't talk about it. But I wanted to say that because I feel like some of us are in that space. They're just in that delay stuck space, and it's because of you, and I cannot, I want to, I want you to blame God, but you can't blame God for this one. Yeah, come on. I know you want to blame Satan, but you can't blame can't him blame for this him. one. Come on. This one's on you. On you. Yep. Yeah. Just say ouch. Yeah. So here it is, this promise is here. God has given you something. I'm going to ask a question to this entire congregation. How many of you, God has given you something and you have not moved on it? Be honest and raise your hand so I know I'm in the right building. Be honest. Makeup lines. I sense all type of daycares, clinics, facilities, all types of things up in here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Churches, pastors in here, I ain't start okay, we ain't gonna go there. Okay. Yeah. Just on delay. Yeah. Because you denied it. Don't worry, we're gonna birth it tonight. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Watch this, you won't leave out of here. Look at somebody and say, You're gonna leave out of here without birthing it tonight. You're gonna do it in the spirit and then the natural is gonna catch up with your spirit, man. You're gonna do it tonight. Tell them you're not gonna be on delay another night. Watch this. So the Bible says that this thing got to the point with Hannah, she was so frustrated, y'all. She was so aggravated. This is how her body began to respond. She began to cry. So what was going on with her internally began to show up externally. Yeah. People speaking to you, you just, hey. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with you. You're just mad. Just mad for no reason. Just upset. Just nice and nasty. Yeah. Okay, women, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all are I'm going to tell the truth. And it's going to set us all free. Just nice, nasty, for no reason. Hannah had gotten to the place where she had began to cry. The Bible says that he began to look at her. He was like, why are you crying? And then, now, you know something wrong with her when she stopped eating. Okay, maybe that's just me. Because I like to eat. I know it might not be showing up no more, but it used to show up around my neck. I had three of them. They would just roll out when they wanted to. Just show up, come out. Where you going? I'm going in my pictures. Back up. Okay, y'all don't like that. Okay. That was about me. I sure I'm talking about my necks. Anyway, so here it is. So I'll just be upset. I'm like, I love, I love food. I did. I love to smell it, all the things. The right situation hit my life, and I stopped eating. I was able to stop eating, y'all. I stopped eating and lost a lot of weight. We won't say how much. Lost a lot of weight. But it had come to the place where I stopped eating. That means that you are in a place that the enemy has caused your mind to be so overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. That you can't function. Food doesn't fill the void. Wow. The pain is so unbearable that it causes you not to be able to fill the void that's on the inside of you. Your heart is broken. Wow. This woman says... So she says this, well, no, she doesn't say anything. She moves into action. The first thing she does is the Bible says is that she ate. Now, I was excited about that because it showed that she was able to be, I promise I'm going to run out. Let me jump. <laughs> Watch this. It says that she ate. When she ate, that showed a sign of her partnering with her prayers. She began to partner there. She began to say, I'm going to do something different. Because the situation had caused her to stop in this manner. So now she said, I've got to do something different. She said, I'm about to eat. I need you to find somebody. Look them in the eyes and we're about to eat. I know y'all ain't that young. There's a bunch of young people up in here. But I need y'all to understand the difference and the power in eating. Y'all know, we said, we're going to eat right here. Y'all ain't talking to me. Something happened different. We're about to pull up to the table and we're about to eat. That means that this thing about to go to another level. That means we're about to eat. And when I eat, I feed my whole family. I'm about to feed my friends. I'm about to feed Bebe, Kebe, Lele, all of them. We all about to eat. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, we're about to eat. You ain't going to be starving while you're out. Come on, we're about to eat. Pull up, pull up, pull up. I'm about to eat, I'm about to eat, I'm about to eat. 
to eat. Give me a sport and a knife, a spoon. We're about to pull up. We're about to eat. Because at this table, y'all, I believe that God is presenting a table. There's so much at this table. And we have given the enemy back his stuff. But God has, okay, y'all let the enemy steal from you. But the Bible says that when the thief is found, he's got to cough up sevenfold everything that he took from you. So if you lost some tears, y'all better be shouting because you're about to have real joy. So Hannah began to eat. The Bible says, then she began to eat. Let me just pull it out here. So I'm going to come back. I like the message translation. So then she began to pray. Watch this. But then this is my favorite part. She, the Bible says that after she ate, then she pulled herself together. Come on with me, y'all know. So I'm happy when a woman pulls herself together. Start getting her affairs in order. Okay, mess with me if you want to. The Bible says that she pulled herself because she was just out of control. She had gotten to the place where everything was all over the place. She was discombobulated. She was just everywhere. But the Bible says that she began to pull. I thought it was necessary that they would put that in the Bible. Because they could have just said that she went into the sanctuary. But the Bible says she pulled herself together. And then she slipped on into the sanctuary. She said, I know where I got to go because I know where my power's at. Y'all ain't talking to me. She said, I'm going to get myself together because I got y'all out here thinking I'm crazy. I ain't crazy. I know where my power comes from. I know when I plug into God, that I'm going to get power to change my situation. Look at your neighbor's a neighbor that's power in prayer. The Bible says she slipped away into the sanctuary. She went into the sanctuary. I want to say you've been plugging into the wrong source. You've been going to the wrong place. You've been getting power from the wrong source. But I dare you to find you the right power partner, the right person to plug into and say, come on, girl, let's go into the sanctuary. Somebody that's gonna hate on you, but you gotta get somebody that's gonna help you in a place of prayer. I need me a prayer warrior. I need somebody that's gonna fight with me. I need somebody that's gonna go up. Y'all ain't talking. I need somebody that's gonna go up against a devil with me. I wish a devil would. Y'all ain't talking. Look at somebody say, I wish a devil would mess with you. He ain't gonna mess with you. He ain't gonna mess with your babies. He ain't gonna mess with your children.
people. And I'm over here mad at this one. I'm calling out their name. This person and this person and this person and this person. And God said, if you got a name, then it's you too, you, you praying too low. Yeah. If you can say Tina and Tasha, you pray to love. But if you say Leviathan, you are so to Then you speak into the white spirit. Spirit of Python. Come on, you talk. You pray to love. Come on, you to love. Come on, you
a sign to Superman when your heart's broken. It's like a sign to God that said, come get in this thing with me. Because the Bible says that he is near to the broken heart. And I look at the translation of the word near. That means get over in there with you. It says that not only is he near, but he in this thing with you. You've been crying thinking you were by yourself. Look at somebody and say, you're never alone. He's always with you. He's near to the broken heart. crazy y'all she was just confident she moves from her place of crazy to confident and then this is the word that came to me she prayed for a boy yeah. <laughs> y'all can stand up <laughs> cause y'all about to prophesy to your neighbor y'all gonna preach the rest of my voice back <laughs> cause I ain't got time to shout this for y'all but you gotta shout it for your neighbor you yeah. Yeah. I told you this one about you tonight is for your neighbor, girl. Yeah. yeah. This one's for you. It's no more you, girl. Double for your trouble, baby. Double for your trouble. Try. Watch this. You gonna shout this for your neighbor, girl. You gonna shout this for your neighbor. And God said, I'm going to 
ain't got long. He said, I'm going to move. He's a God that redeems time. That means that he, together, he makes time collide with purpose. And it has to manifest. I need somebody to shout before the year is out. And she said, the Bible says, she named him Samuel. And it says, I asked God for him. Yeah. You're going to walk around because there's a time she was in there crying to Eli. And Eli, she was crazy. Watch this. There's a time you're going to speak about your promise. There's a time you're going to speak about your, your vision. But there's a time when your vision gonna speak for you. In the next chapter, she walks in with her baby. Gives her baby back to Eli. She didn't have to cry no more. She didn't have to talk about it. Now her vision is in her hands. Y'all ain't talking to me. The vision is in her hands. It went from a head and a heart to a hands. It went from... She didn't have to cry over it no more. She was burping her vision. She was nursing her vision. She was pull, she pulled up to her bill, her office building. Okay, I'm prophesying. She pulled up to the building with 18 spaces. Okay. She pulled up to okay her youth center. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. She pulled up to a daycare facility. Yeah, yeah. She was sitting at the table and her book signing. Yeah. Come on. Come on. There's a time when you talk about it. Believe it in your heart, but then there's a time that's going to be in your hands. And you have a pen writing your name on it. There's somebody in here that has a brand for jeans. There's a brand. There's a clothing brand in here. I prophesy to you, by the year is out, before the year is out. That particular clothing line will be manifested. Manifestation is this: when man gets in his station, you see manifestation. Wow! 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 You have a responsibility. Watch this. You're going to respond with your ability. Yeah! 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 You have a responsibility to do it. You're going to respond with your ability. You can do it. He put it in you already. The Bible says there's a treasure in I believe y'all. Y'all look bored. Uh, there's a treasure in this earthen vessel. He put a treasure in you. Birth it out. Before the year is out. The home you've been talking about. You're gonna be cleaning it up. Putting stuffed pictures on the wall. I feel the Holy Ghost, because somebody just saw it in the spirit. The Holy Ghost. Go get you a new air freshener for your car. Come on. Come on. That was the last time that car quit on you on the side of the road. That's the last time you your windy. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking back to me. That's the last time that car you pushed it up the hill. You about to drive what you want to drive. That's the last time you pull up to the penitentiary looking at your son behind bars. This is the day you're going to walk on. You're going to see him at Thanksgiving sitting at the table. Before the year is... She may have walked away, ran away. Prodigal daughter, but she's coming home. Somebody need to say, before the year is... 
Because in the next chapter, chapter number two, Hannah goes back to the temple with her promise. Look at somebody say, turn the page. <laughs> my chapter two. Come look greater than my chapter one. It was pain in chapter one, but there's a promise in chapter two. I appreciate everything I can think of. I need you tonight to do this with me. I'm, I'm going to ask for two different types of things. Because I believe in the word of God. I don't take up offerings. I don't do that. That's not my call. I don't. I don't. I tell people, please don't ask. Because I'm just bad at it. But I want to say this tonight. I feel an unction from God. You need to put a seat on this. But there's somebody in a desperate situation. You're coming to the altar tonight not for with the seed. You are the seed. You are the sacrifice. God's going to respond to this sacrifice tonight. You ready? You're coming on this word. You're leaving out of that boat. You're manifesting. I don't care if I preach a pastor leader, y'all. I beat people to the altar. You ain't going to outdo me worshiping because I love him too much. I learned something really, really cool in my class. I learned something that when you worship, the Bible says, well, there's a word that's used called Yaresh in Hebrew. And it, it means to remove the tenant. That there was somebody, or you basically remove them from that space that they have taken up residency in. There's an enemy that's trying to take up residency in your worship. But when you begin to nourish or you begin to worship, you begin to remove them out of that place. You dismantle them. And you give God everything he deserves. I'm asking you tonight, will you be the sacrifice? You can come with the seed in your hand or you can just come as the seed. But I need you to move it. I said there's about 40 of you and the, the seed offering that the Lord told me even when I got on the plane. He said $40 for somebody. Somebody needs to show this 40 tonight. And you can put the given information up there. $40. 40. 40 years in the wilderness. Coming out of the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on up here. I'm coming up this way. I beat people to the altar. I don't care my title. I cast my crown. I don't, you can't tell me. I'm, I, I'm a daughter when I'm in the house of God. I'm a daughter. I know how to be a daughter. I don't know how to do nothing else. I'm a prophet. I prophesy. I preach. But my favorite position in the church is a daughter. I'm his girl. I'm God's girl. If you're here, God, we've been stagnant long enough. Come on, slip off into the sanctuary. Do what you know how to do. Some people think prayer doesn't work, but y'all, prayer still works. It's prayer that changes things. Prayer changes everything. I just, it's by the power of God, God just ended a death sentence for somebody. It's almost like you had back-to-back -back attacks. Death surround you, but it didn't come nigh you. God ended it tonight. God, I thank you. The blood covers them. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. My mantle's been dropped. I got that Come on, these babies are crying out. Because I want more of God. I want more of Him. Come on, this is a place. I could talk to Him for you, but you know what you need to let go of tonight. God, here we are standing in the need of prayer tonight. We stand here, God, saying, God, do what only you know how to do. God, I release. 
I really 